We have with us Dr. Laurie Marker, who is the executive director of the Cheetah Conservation Fund. It's the organization that is responsible uh, in, a, in a big way for making this translocation happen. Um, Dr. Marker has been involved with this project for over a decade. Uh, welcome to the print. Thank you very much. Um, so the first question that I want to ask you is, you know, what was the journey like? How are the cheetahs? What is your impression of their, you know, their first experience over here? Well, um, overall, the journey was okay. It was very long. So we started yesterday um, where we're based in Ochiborongo in Namibia, where we had the cats that we had to first catch and then crate them. Um, from that, then we had about a four-hour drive to get to the airport. We have a private jet that was there, and it was very nice. So the cats were able to actually travel in luxury in their boxes, and they traveled well overnight. And then we landed um, here, not far from here, and uh, we're brought here to Kunu in uh, helicopters. And the cats again did okay. By the time we were able to release them, though, it had been you know, well over 24 hours. So they were glad to stretch their legs and get out. But they were also kind of freaked out because there were a lot of people. These are wild animals, and they were trying to get away from everybody. So we had to try to do crowd control and ask the people to step back. And then the cats have calmed, and they look just fine. Okay. Um, what do the next 24 hours look like, um, you know, for the cats and also for, for, the, for the staff at, at Kuno? Oh, uh, well... The cats, I think, will just overnight be interested in all the new sights and sounds. We already know that they've seen um, some of the, the deer, and they've been quite excited to see them. They will have their first um, meal tomorrow, food, um, which will not be live prey to start with because they're in small holding areas where they will be for the next month in quarantine. And then we'll be working very closely with the Kuno staff to help them learn how to work around cheetahs because they've never been around cheetahs. And cheetahs are different than all the other big cats. They're, um, again, they've got flight versus fight. They want to get away from you. Um, they're very high energy, I guess I would say. And so we will be doing a lot of teaching with the staff that's there for how to take care of them. And then a couple of my staff will be staying for quite some time here to work very closely together with the staff here. Um, so, can you walk us through the kind of science behind getting uh, four to five individuals every year, you know, to supplement the population? Well, it is very important um, as part of a metapopulation management. We need new bloodlines. And so, every year or two, we will look at um, one or two different animals coming in, or a few more. Um, ideally, these animals will be separated out of Kuno at some point if they start being very successful into some of the other reserves that the government has also identified, which is the hope. So that's the only way we can really grow the population is by bringing in new blood and trying to grow it um, genetically. Um, so this project has also been fairly controversial among other conservationists. They um, you know, they say that, you know, it'll be difficult for, for the cheetah population to sustain in India. What, what, what do you have to say about that? I guess we'll see. Of course, knowing all the different sides, um, it's not going to be easy. No, not at all. But um, having an appropriate prey base and uh, the right cats, I think that it can be a successful project. It's going to take a lot of time. And our successes we won't see probably for, you know, five to ten years, if not longer. Um, so speaking of prey base, uh, what is the typical prey base of these, uh, these African cheetahs? And, you know, what, how will they have to adjust once they're over here? Well, the habitat is very similar to some of the areas that we have, both in Namibia as well as in South Africa. And um, the prey base will be a small antelope, small deer. So similar to um, the, the deer that we have here, as well as some of the antelope. They can catch antelope as large as, like your guy, our kudu are also what cheetahs will hunt. Um, so there is the similar prey size, and um, they just have to start learning how that prey acts. And that's going to be through trial and error and watching them. 
now that they're here, what are some of the things that they're most vulnerable to, um, you know, disease or, you know, anything else? Any, any concerns that you have? Well, we have vaccinated them against everything that potentially a cheetah could get um, or dog, actually, because we've also vaccinated against canine distemper, which is around in this area. Um, cheetahs, we don't think have gotten it, but um, we did vaccinate just in case. Along that line, though, um, probably leopards might be one of our main problems that we'd be looking at. But the cats will be monitored very closely. All these cats have been around leopards, so it's not like they are not used to them. It's just not used to the, them in this habitat. So all of it's going to be a trial and error. And, you know, unfortunately, we may lose some animals, too. Uh, we will, of course, do our very best. Um, they're very precious animals to you and us. Um, and doing a project like this is, again, not easy. I think we talked about this before, too, and the fact that um, we always say it's not for Bambi lovers. It's very, very, very difficult. It's difficult on the people who are doing the rewilding, rehabilitation, and it's also very difficult on the different animals. So ideally, it's better not to let an animal go extinct, and that's what the Cheetah Conservation Fund does throughout its range, is trying to work with the communities. Um, governments um, and trying to find ways that the cheetah can live on the land where it already is, growing those populations, reducing the human wildlife conflict aspects. Uh, but bringing in a population back is very challenging, and we will be right there holding hands with India, as will Namibia, because these are a gift of Namibia to India. And um, therefore, it is a joint partnership, and we will work our very best to try to help reestablish the population that India would like. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, do subscribe to the print for more videos like this one.